Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to interact with the Ethereum blockchain with the Web3.js library by, you know, inspecting blocks on the blockchain. And I'll show you how to do this with Web3.js and kind of actually go into detail about, you know, how blocks work on the Ethereum blockchain. So this will be a little mixture of code and a little bit of uh, kind of theory. So yeah, be sure to check out the other videos in this series if you haven't already. Um, it's not necessary to follow along with this video. And be sure to check out my website where I'm going to be releasing these videos um, and the code examples at dappuniversity.com. I'll put a link down in the description below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel to see the rest of the videos in this playlist when they come out. So yeah, today we're talking about blocks. And um, you know, throughout this series, we've been kind of referencing Etherscan and seeing, um, you know, blocks um, like this. Let me see the block number here, and we can see uh, some information about it, like you know who it was mined by and the number of transactions that are in the block and the block uh, reward, which is pretty high. Um, so yeah, let's kind of talk about those and talk about how we can get this information with the Web3 library and kind of dig into blocks and you know what they're all about and see some data. So we're going to do this with the Web3 library um, by uh, with a couple of functions. We've got this get block number. We'll use this. This will return the actual uh, latest block in the blockchain or the, the, the block number. We can do get block and we can pass in the, the block hash or the block number. And um, yeah, we'll just kind of start there and show you what you can do with Web3. So here I've got a um, you know little sandbox that we've been using um, to work in this tutorial series. I've got you know just a basic app.js file here and a terminal. Um, basically, if you want to follow along, all you need to have installed is a uh, node package manager uh, and node. You can see if you have node installed like this. And the only really JavaScript dependency that we'll be using today is uh, the Web3 library. So you want to make sure you have that installed by just doing npm install web3. All right. So in this node file, or sorry, in this JavaScript file here, uh, I've got some boilerplate code. Uh, essentially, I'm just pulling in the Web3 library, and I'm instantiating a new uh, Web3 object like this. Um, I'm passing in this uh, Ethereum node URL from Vura, and I show you how to get this in the previous videos. You can either watch those videos or just sign up for Infura and uh, you know get a get an Ethereum node uh, URL and paste it in here. This is just an API key. So uh, when we do that, we'll actually have a connection to the main Ethereum blockchain. And we'll start off by using, um, we'll, just, we'll just get the latest block from the blockchain. We'll say um, web3.eth.get block number. We'll say then. So I'm actually going to show you this. In my previous tutorials, you know a lot I've been saying, uh, passing in a callback function here, like uh, yeah, we're doing get block number and then pass in a callback function, but you can actually just do a promise and say then, or do a promise chain, uh, console log, just do that. And this will, oops, typo. All right, so you can see the block number here, and this is the uh, latest block. Let's take a look on Etherscan, see if that's similar. Fresh, this is, yeah, 081, and this is 081. So these uh, seem to be in sync. All right, and when I say in sync, that means sometimes your um, Ethereum nodes can get a little out of sync. It's kind of a pain when you're developing uh, decentralized applications with Ethereum. It's just a pain point that we all kind of have to work through. Um, but it looks like this block number is the same as the one that Etherscan has. So that's a pretty uh, simple thing we can do. We get the latest block number, and we can also get the latest block like this. We say web3.eth.getBlock, and we can pass it a couple of different things. We can pass uh, the latest block like this. 
run this, and that will return the latest block. We can uh, uh, log some information about this block. We can see the uh, pass it a function. Let's say console log. Yeah. See the hash. All right, we can see the block. Um, let's do this. And let's just say block number. Oops. All right. All right, you see that data? This is the actual hash of the block, and this is the block number. So we can um, get another block. You can also, instead of saying latest block, we can also specify uh, the block number like that. All right, and we can also specify uh, the hash of the block. Probably need to do a string here. Oops. All right. There we go. So these are all the ways you can identify blocks when you're getting a block. Um, we can also get like the latest 10 blocks um, with a similar way, but we would have to actually loop through them. So what I would do is say something like this, web3 eth get block number. I would get the number and then let's we'll just chain this and say latest. Pass it a function. We'll say latest. Uh, yeah, let's say latest. And watch you loop through this, the for loop. We'll say let uh, zero. And then i is, uh, sorry, let i equal zero. And then uh, i is less than 10. Well, you get the last 10 blocks. We'll i plus plus. And we'll say web three. EGA should get block, and we'll say latest minus uh, i, all right? So it'll give us the last 10, the, the, you know, we'll count down from 10 all the way down to zero, and we'll say then console log. We'll see the extra block. All right, so that seems to be the last 10 blocks. Let's uh, pass this a function, uh, block, say console log uh, block number. All right, we can see the latest 10 block numbers there. Same thing with the block hash. All right, see the last 10 hashes. Okay, so that's a neat little trick, but let's actually dig into the data of the block and talk about the data we actually get back. We'll do that like this. Um, let's clear this code out and say, you know, web 3eth get block latest. And then we will say then, and then we'll say console.log. All right, so there's some data. Let's just pull our terminal over here. Uh, so we can actually see. I'm going to minimize this a second and just uh, focus on the terminal here. So here's all the data we get back. Uh, this is all the information that's in a block. So this is, you know, like the data that you'd see uh, on Etherscan if you click the block. Um, yeah, this is a similar kind of data that we see in our terminal. We see the block difficulty. Um, you know, you talk about, you know, mining on the Ethereum network. Um, this is basically the difficulty of the miner uh, has to overcome when solving the puzzle, right? You know, when transactions are created on the Ethereum blockchain, it basically it's a competition and the competition gets harder and harder. You know, people talk about the profitability of mining going down on the Ethereum network. That's because the difficulty is, is getting greater. Um, we can see the gas limit and the gas used in each block. 
And this is the block hash. So this is, you know, an identifier. We can, uh, you know, we use that to um, identify the block. We could pass that into the function. You know, we can get on an ether scan and, you know, paste this uh, block hash in. And ether scan will uh, return it. Oh, it's, yeah, well, it's actually looking for a transaction. Interesting. Um, I don't know why that is. But we can see a couple other things. This is the address of the miner that mined the transaction. Um, this is the one that won, you know, the reward. Um, this is uh, the nonce for the transaction. Uh, this is the block number. This is the uh, parent hash of the previous block. This is uh, the timestamp that the block was mined at. So if you wanted to see, you know, like, if you were to list the blocks out with the latest 10 blocks, um, you can convert this. I believe this is in uh, you know, seconds since uh, you know, ep epic time, if you're familiar with that concept. And we can see the total difficulty here. And this is uh, the number, you know, all the transaction hashes in here. And so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the block size. And this is the size of the block in terms of uh, bytes. It's not like the number of transactions that are in here. Because you can see this is, you know, uh, 25016. This is not 25016 transactions in length. This is just all the transactions that are there. Um, so let's talk about the size a little bit. So we can see the size on Etherscan of uh, the block size kind of over time. So we can see if you hover over uh, any of these data points that the block size is actually the number of bytes uh, that cont is contained in the block. So it's actually about the amount of data that's contained, not uh, the number of transactions. So um, that's just an important distinction to know when you're reading this data. It's important to know like what you're looking at when you see these things. But also know that you know the transactions that are contained um, inside these blocks are um, you know still important. Like these are the transactions that get bundled together to actually make up a block, and then the blocks you know have a parent block uh, of you know the parent. Yeah, this is the hash of the parent block that is chained to this block. So these are the transactions that make up the block, and this is the other block that's chained together to make up the blockchain. And you know while we're here. Um, we can also do, you know, a couple other things. We can get, um, you know, we can get block transaction count. And we can log this out to the console. You can see how many transactions are in that actual block. Oops. Uh-oh. I just made a typo there. Say app. Okay. You can see that there are uh, 116 transactions in this block. Um, so let's actually do get block. And we'll log out the, uh, let's actually log out the block hash here. Oops. No typo. All right, so here's the block hash. So let's actually identify this block. Um, sorry, this is kind of messy. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show you another function that you can use. So get block hash, uh, let's just call this hash. And then we'll say, um, we can, what we can do is, I want to show you that you can do uh, get transaction from block. I believe that's the right name. So we can pass it the block hash, the identifier of the block we want to um, call from, and we could just say we want to get the second one, or it will be zero base index, so it'd be three, I believe. Um, and then we can just do console the lock. I think this will work. All right. There you go. So this is actually um, the transaction uh, 
number three, because this is zero base index, that is bundled inside of this block. You can see block hash is the same, and uh, the block number, and you know, all that other data that we saw in the previous videos where we uh, worked with transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. So check out those previous videos if you haven't already, and be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll go ahead and call this episode uh, for today. So thanks again for watching Dapp University. Thank you.